Yes, he's a wonderful savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He is a wonderful savior. Oh, he is a wonderful savior to me. Yes, he's a wonderful savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He is a wonderful savior to me. Testing one, two. Hey, I mess up at times. It's okay. <laughs> it's the boots I got on. <laughs> they hurt. <laughs> yeah, they hurt. Amen. Say amen. Shall we sing? Oh, what a wondrous love I see freely shown for you and me. By the one who did atone Just to show his matchless grace Jesus apart from the race And guessing a near alone And oh, what love Matchless love And oh, what love For me was shown His form ever I will be For the love he gave to me Suffer all alone. Terry, here he told the three. Terry, here he watch for me. But they heard no bitter moan. Slip while my love and Savior wept. And death in a near love. And oh, what love! A 
matchless love. His love. And all I love for me was sure. His forever I will be for the love he gave to me. All alone, long and in anguish, he was here, weeping there for you and me. For our sin to him was known. We shall love him evermore for the anguish that he bore. Yes, and a knee alone, and oh, what love, matchless love, and oh, what love for me was shown. Forever I will be for the love he gave to me. When he suffered all alone. Amen. Morning, Lansing. Once again, we have come to this part of this worship service where we are to commune with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, this will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses. I'm sorry. This will be taken from Matthew, 26th chapter, verses 26 through 30. And it reads And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which shed for many for the mission of sins. But I say to you, I don't drink of that fruit of the vine, from now on drink new of my father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went to the Mount of Olives. Now we have prayer, now we will have prayer for the bread as well as the cup. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you again this day. Thank you and praise you again for this opportunity to commune with you, Father. We also, Father, like to thank you for this bread, which represents your body, as well as the cup, which represents your blood. Your blood. We pray to you, Father, that all who take this do so in a manner which is pleasing and accepting your eyesight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
So that will conclude communion service. Amen. Which now we go to another part of this service, which is offering. Amen. And this will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and read verse 6 and 7. And it reads, But this I say, he who sows sparingly also reaps so sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap so bountifully. So let each one give a purpose in his heart, and not grudging or necessity. For God loves your forgiver. Now here at Lansing, we have four ways for you to give. The first is in person, and the next three options are using QuickPay with Zelle, using the following email address, lansingcoc at lansingcoc.com. And our next option is also using the church's website, which is also lansingcoc at lansingcoc.com. And at the right top corner of the page, click Donation. And our last option is using the U.S. Postal Service, which is Lansing Church of Christ, P.O. Box 606, Lansing, Illinois, 60438. Amen. Uh, and this will also include our weekly and active building fund. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you again this day. Thank you and praise you again for another opportunity to give back to you, Father. We pray to you, Father, that all who are here, as well as all who are watching virtually, Father, will give back what he or she purpose in their hearts to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Church, say amen. amen. We're going to sing a song. My little niece always asks me to sing this song for her. She loves it. I got to stay in good with my little nieces, right? Number 668, our God, he is alive. Amen? Number 668. <laughs> Number 668. We all have it? Let's lift our voices and sing. Amen? Yeah. Shall we sing? There is beyond the as a blow a God concealed from human sight. He tipped the skies with heavenly hill and framed the worlds with his great might. There is a God. He is alive, and him we live, and we survive, and we survive from the star God, from the star God, created man, created man, he is our God, the A long, long time ago, a God who voiced the prophets heard. He is the God that we should know, who speaks from his inspired word. There is a God, he is alive, and him we live. We survive from the star God, from the star God, created man, created man, he is our God, the great I am, our God, who sun up on a tree, a love was willing there to give, 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 there Survive, and we survive from the star God, from the star God, created man, created 
Amen. That's all right. Amen. Our God, He is alive. Amen. Amen. Yes. Woo. Our God, He is alive. Say it, brother. So since we know He is alive, right? We're just going to have a little talk with him. Is that all right? Just a little talk with Jesus makes it all right. Number 646. And my brother told me I have to sing one more song after this one. Yeah. <laughs> he sent me a note. <laughs> 646. We all have to say amen. Amen. Let's lift our voices and sing amen. Amen. <clears throat> I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and a little light from heaven filled my soul. Oh, you know it made my heart in love, yes, and it rubbed my name above. Now just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Oh, now let us have. Oh, let us tell the Lord Oh, he will hear A great is good And he will last by and by Now when you feel As your heart Oh, you will find Who Jesus makes it right Sometimes my passing And then a cloud of dust Blowing high the light of day Oh, the Lord of this Ascends and may rise Yes, and hide the starry skies But just a little talk With Jesus clears away Oh, now let us have Oh, let us tell the Lord Oh, he will hear A fate is cut And he will answer by and by Now when you feel As your heart Oh, you will find Jesus makes it right Doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. Oh, you know I go to Him in prayer. Yes, He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus and makes it right. Oh, now let us have. Oh, let us tell the heart Oh, he will hear And he will last Now when you feel As your heart Oh, you know it may be my heart But Jesus makes it right Oh, I said it's alright it's alright, oh it's alright, yes it's alright And just a little talk with Jesus and makes it right Oh I said it's alright, it's alright, oh it's alright, yes it's alright And just a little talk with Jesus and makes it right Oh now let us have Oh, let us tell the Lord Oh, he will hear A great is good And he will ask Bye, bye Now when you feel As your heart Oh, you will find When Jesus makes it right Oh, I said it's all right it's alright, church is alright, oh it's alright And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right Oh, I said it's alright, it's alright, oh it's alright 
church is all right uh, And just a little talk with Jesus and makes it right Oh, now let us have Oh, let us tell God about Oh, here we are Now when you feel as your heart Oh, you will find that Jesus makes it right All right Just a little talk with Jesus makes it all right See that he gave me that, that signal. I thought I did all right. I didn't do one more. All right, what we're going to sing now? You know, God blesses us in so many ways. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we ask for it. My brother said a Cadillac, but we get a little small Chevy. But we should be happy, right? Amen. So we're going to sing this song, <clears throat> and it's entitled anyway. "Anyway You Bless Me, Lord, yeah, I'll Be Satisfied." Yeah. Is that all right? Now you want to, now if you sing it, I want you to sing it with conviction, like you really mean it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Even if you have to catch the bus, it's all right, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyway, you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Amen. All right? Amen. Amen. Anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know I'll be satisfied. Anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know I'll be satisfied. Anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know I'll be satisfied. Anyway, bless me, Lord, you know I'll be satisfied. Anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know I'll be satisfied. Anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know I'll be satisfied. You know I'll be satisfied anyway. You know I'll be satisfied when I heard the voice of my Jesus. And he said, Come on, on to me, and I give you rest. Oh, yeah. Well, my God, where it was. Yes, where it was. I'm by down anyway. Bless me, Lord, you know I'm satisfied anyway. Don't you know I'm being satisfied anyway? Anyway, you bless me. Don't you know I'm being satisfied anyway? Anyway, Anyway, you bless me. Don't you know I am be satisfied anyway? Bless me, Lord. You know I'll be satisfied. Well, so I came to Jesus just as I was. I was wounded. I was weary. I was sad. Lost in sin. But I found in Him for a rest, a resting place. Anyway. Bless me, Lord, you know I'll be sad. Oh, anyway, don't you know I'll be satisfied anyway? Anyway, you bless me, Lord, you know I'll be satisfied anyway. Don't you know I'll be satisfied anyway? Don't you know I'll be satisfied anyway? Bless me, Lord, you, you know, know I'll be satisfied uh, 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 Well, amazing is in grace Oh, how sweet uh, the sound uh, I'm that saved uh, 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 Oh, wretch, oh, like me Lord, like me Well, I was, I was lost Oh, but now I found uh, anyway Don't you know I'm being 
satisfied anyway. Anyway, you bless me. Don't you know I? Be satisfied anyway. Don't you know I? I'm being satisfied anyway. Blessing me, Lord, you know I. Oh, I say anyway. Don't you know I? And I be said anyway. Don't you know I? And I be said anyway. Don't you know I? And I be said anyway. Don't you know I? And I be said anyway. Don't you know I? And I be said anyway. Come on, let's give God some praise. God is good all the time, and God is good. Come on, let's give him some praise. Let's give him some praise. Boy, y'all sound like y'all want to have church up in here. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Ain't it, y'all? Regardless of what you have gone through, what you are going through, God is going to carry you through. And you have to believe that. Let's give God some more praise. He's good. Even if you are watching virtually, I would like for you to repeat after me. Don't worry, Don't worry. About, anything. about anything. Instead, Instead pray, pray about, everything. about everything. Don't worry, Don't worry. About, anything. about anything. Instead, Instead pray, pray about, everything. about everything. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. For he, is good. For he is good. For his mercy, for his mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. For, he good. for he is good. For his mercy, for his mercy endures, endures forever. forever. You may take your seats. I'm just glad to be here. Amen. Amen. It's good to be around God's people. Amen. To share in the blessings. And I'm going to tell you something. It's good to look out and see you look blessed. If you ain't blessed, you're fooling me today. You look blessed. God has been doing some stuff. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. I want to talk about a sensitive subject. I always think this subject is sensitive. Lord, increase our faith. Lord, increase our faith. Yes, sir. Bad things happen to good people. Yes. And you know, following Christ, staying in your lane, helping others, taking less when we deserve more, yes. decreasing so our fellow Christian can increase. All these things are good, but none of them will exempt us from trouble. See, trouble seeks out whom he wants to seek out. And he keeps seeking us until he finds us. There was a saying a while ago I, I, I heard uh, a lot of times throughout my years. It said, don't start none. Won't be none. Y'all remember that, right? But that ain't true. Because trouble can show up all by itself. At times it can feel like some people drain the niceness right out of us. We might find ourselves on our knees praying for peace, comfort, and the ability to forgive. Because we keep playing the bad things back instead of deleting them from our heart. There's a scripture that appears to not make a lot of sense. And Jesus said it. And it seems like it makes less sense when you're under duress. I want us to study this today. Amen. Take out your Bible. 
your apps, whatever you have. And I got my main man, Brother D, over here in the corner. Let's do it. He's going to get for us Luke, the 17th chapter. And Dion is going to read verses number 3, 4, and 5. Luke, chapter number 17. In the NKJV, what does it say, Brother Dion? Take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you. If your brother sins against you. Rebuke him. Rebuke him. And if he repents. And if he repents. Forgive him. Forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day. And if he sins against you how many times? Seven. Seven times. In how long? In a day. In a day. Keep going. And seven times in a day. And seven times in a day. Returns to you saying. Returns to you saying. I repent. I repent. You shall forgive him. You shall forgive him. Keep going. And the apostle said to the Lord. What did they say? Increase your faith. Jesus said. If somebody do you wrong. And repents. Forgive him. Amen. Amen. And he really didn't talk about what they did. He just said, forgive them. Amen. But sometimes when we look at these verses, it makes it look like Jesus wants us to allow people to walk all over us. But that's not true. Lansing, forgiveness is not for the offender. It's for the people of God. It's for you and me. When we forgive, sometimes it makes us feel like folk done got away with it. But you have to look at it from a different angle. Mm -hmm. I'm not forgiving you to make you think that I'm weak or that you slick. I'm forgiving you because my heavenly father forgives me. Amen. Amen. Say it, brother. Say it. I'm forgiving you because I am a child of God. And yes, you may cause me to go home and get on my knees and cry and snot and all that because I'm hurt. But at the end of the day, the Bible teaches us it's better to suffer for the Lord. If you want to reign with him, you're going to have to suffer for him. Amen. Amen. The other thing is this. Sometimes we don't realize, but forgiveness, again, is not just for the offender. It's for us to be able to release it. Amen. 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 Forgiveness is a part of deliverance. When something happens to you that you don't like, that you don't agree with, you cannot continue to go on and continue to harbor all those bad thoughts just like ain't nothing wrong and think you're going to have peace in your life. In order for you to truly be delivered from whatever happened, you're going to have to forgive. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying it doesn't hurt. I'm not saying that you may not feel some type of way. But I have to talk about this message today because if we're not forgiving people, if we're not forgiving people, if we're not uh, being who God wants us to be, then we're not letting our light shine to the world. Amen. Amen. Are y'all understanding say what it, I'm saying? Say it, brother. Say it. Now, I talked about deliverance. God does not want us to hold on to evil or depressing thoughts. I don't know about y'all. Can I just preach like I want to preach today? I just want to preach like I want to preach. I don't like being at home thinking about stuff that makes me feel mad, angry, depressed. I don't like those type of thoughts. And that's why the Bible says think on good things. See, if I'm thinking on good things, God would deliver me over the bad stuff. But sometimes we stand in our way of deliverance because we keep repeating what happened over and over again in our minds. And you know what, church? If it happened, guess what? It happens. 
And there's nothing that we could do about it. God wants us to live in peace. I can't have peace hating you. I don't know if y'all understanding this today. I can't have peace being jealous of you. I can't have peace if you did something to me and I'm feeling some type of way about you. I'm all messed up on the inside. God doesn't want us to be like that. The Bible says to rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. How can I rejoice if I'm always mad, depressed, thinking about what's happening to me instead of what God is doing for me? Lansing, we have to understand that we cannot live in peace with an evil heart. Amen. 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 Peace and evilness don't exist together. Amen. Amen. They're like oil and water. How can anyone find true peace being evil? Now, I'm going to teach you something today. When you think of evil, what you think of? People just doing all kind of stuff, right? Just mean and mad and bad people, right? Do you know that if you don't forgive me, you're evil? Mm -hmm. If you can't coexist with me, you're evil. If you can't focus your mind on God, but you keep focusing on what you want to do to me, Y'all didn't come here to hear this, did you? I can tell you didn't come to hear this. You thought evil was those other folk. Church folk can be evil and praise at the same time. Anyway, you black. Why you keep singing that song? Uh, 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 I hate that song. That's evil. <laughs> but see, if you're really into Christ, and even if you don't have what you think that you want, even if you don't have those things, if you truly love the Lord and you truly believe in God, when you sing any way you bless me, Lord, you're just praising God for all the things that he has done because you know that God has been better to you than you really deserve. So you may not have that big car. You may not have that big house, but you got some transportation. You got some stuff. You better give God some praise. Amen. Folk talking about, I don't know why my neighbor drive a big car. Because your neighbor got a big car. No, that's how your neighbor drives a big car. Praise God for what you have. Evil can come and take us over. But I want you to know this today. When it comes to evil and peace, one must go so the other one can grow. Did y'all hear that? If I allow somebody to take my peace, I got evilness left. And now I have a lot of fertile ground for evil to grow. You're getting this. But if I allow God to remove the evilness out of me and sometimes we got to be real with ourselves Lord I ain't right I talk too much I meddle too much I'm in too many people's business I'm not even worried about my own business because I'm in somebody else's business. Lord help me let me preach like I want to preach today you know sometimes we look at all the folk but we need to spend more time looking at our own selves we've been looking at folk for a long time how am I living how is my mental? If I allow my peace to go, evil is there. Evil will grow. But if I allow God to take the evilness out of me, and why did I say allow God? Can God do anything he wants to? Of course. But he's not going to break us down, beat us down to take it away. He wants us to give it to him. Are y'all understanding? You getting this, Andy? See, if you want God to deliver you, you got to say, here it is. God said, if you give it to me, I'll do something with it. Look what you're going to do with it. Don't worry about what I'm going to do with it. Just give it to me and let me take care 
of it. But when our evilness is gone, then our peace can grow. Many people don't have peace because they're still concerned about things that they have no control over. God said, get rid of those things. I want you to know also, Lansing, that it's spiritually and physically unhealthy to live with evil and bad thoughts in your mind all the time. You know, when you ain't thinking straight, you'll stop at a green light. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. The light will turn red and you'll take off. Because your mind ain't right. And when, you, when your mind ain't right, you do what other folk do. That's when you're at the stoplight and somebody else take off and you don't even look. You just take off right behind them. Just to find out cars are coming the opposite way. But when your mind is clicking on all cylinders, you won't follow the person who goes into the intersection when the light is not green. You're going to be wondering why they're in the intersection when the light is not green. What I'm trying to get you to understand today is evilness is out. And some of you think that evilness just come on Halloween. It never goes away. Something has to change. And the change must come from us. I'm going to tell you why. Because the world is going to do them. You cannot expect for folk in the world to respect you. If you think they respect you, Keep living. Come close and listen. The more things change, the more our heart needs to change. I'm going to say it again. The more things change, the more our heart needs to change. When we are hurt, we have to dig deep to forgive. The world that we live in is getting worse. And you know, I'm going to tell you something. This is simply a prophecy of Scripture being fulfilled. So as they're getting worse, we have to change more. Do you remember? I like that. See, you know, we need more kids in here, right? The baby say, go ahead, boy, you're saying something. <laughs> that was right on time. <laughs> Do you remember back in the day when it was okay to leave kids at home by themselves? And, you know, the only thing you were worried about is like, look, don't let your friends come over this house. You know, don't let nobody in the house when I, when I ain't here. Uh, uh, don't have no parties. You, you know you can't have no parties. You know, and, and if you turn on the stove, make sure you turn that stove off. It was things like that. You know, we weren't so concerned about folk coming in on them. I'm talking about back in the day. Do you remember when your house, your home used to feel safe? When you felt like if I can just get to the crib, I'm good. Now people break in on people while they're in the house. You could be eating at the dinner table and folk would come and kick your door down like they live there. Take your TV and your pork chops. <laughs> Nowadays when we go places, we always gotta look around us. I teach my son, hey, hey, don't have your head in the clouds. You just walking. No, look, look, you see that guy coming up behind with his hand in his pocket? Look, because people have a lot of crazy thoughts in their head. Look around, I don't care, even if you're at the gas station, look. Nowadays, we have to lock our doors at the gas station, turn on the alarm, and all kind of stuff. 
because folk ease in on the other side. You know, all kind of stuff happening now. Evil is everywhere. People are on capers, always trying to do something. But again, when you're hurting, though, and somebody does something, and that's why the pain comes, it's challenging to forgive. That's why I want to talk about it. See, we can't be children of God living like Satan disciples. You understand what I'm saying? Just going to church shouldn't be the only difference between us. It should be the way we live our lives. You know, uh, Friday night, about 10.30, 10.45, somewhere around there, uh, my sister called me and uh, she said, hey, the church alarm is going off. Now, Sometimes that happens, you know. Uh, you know, if you have sensors, you can have a spider web or something like that. Uh, and then I said, okay. Um, she said, but for some reason, when uh, the alarm company called me, it went straight to voicemail, so I know they're going to call you next. And true enough, boom, they calling me. I said, let me talk to them. I said, hey, and they told me what was going on. I said, I got it. And uh, I said, let, let me ask you this. I said, are there just motion detectors that are going off? He said, no, there are multiple motion detectors and a door. I said, somebody's in the building. Call the police. So my sister said, hey, get here. I said, all right. I come and I get to the church and the police told her, no, just chill. Let us walk around the building and then we'll come back. They walk around, you know, they pull on all the doors. All the doors are locked. They walk around to the back of the building and... Right there, the big, beautiful window. Somebody broke out one of the windows. Glass everywhere. They broke in. She said, Levada done broke in the building. Now, I, I'm going to tell you something. That hurt me. I mean, I was really hurt. I was hurt enough to cry. See, I love God's house. That hurt me, man. That hurt me. And so many thoughts was trying to race into my mind. And I, I kept saying, I, no, 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 no. Let's, let, let's just get there. Let, let's just get there. But I'm human, y'all. I'm, I'm a human being. And when you mess with my family or you try to mess with my pesos or you try to mess with my church, ah, the gorilla comes out of me. I was hurt. But I knew I still had to be a child of God. You know, evil is everywhere except heaven. And that's because the devil got evicted. Now, I want to say this. Anybody that would break into God's house, they don't really understand who God is. And they don't really understand whose house they're breaking into. They don't, they don't get it. Um, to them, it's just a building. But it's God's house. Uh, it would be better to break into a lion's den, covered in bloody meat, than to take anything that belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord's house. And all its possessions were purchased with the Lord's money. Amen. Case in point. Let me explain this to you. If we said, ain't going to be no more land, this is it. Do you know none of us could sell this building, take the proceeds, and use it for our personal use? You know why? Because it's the Lord's money. We would have to donate the money to another house of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't take it because it belongs to God. And, 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 and I need you to pray with me and pray for me as well as the offenders. I don't want nothing to happen to them. I had to come to myself and realize 
They don't understand what they're doing. What makes you get up in the morning and look at the sun and say, I'm going to break into a church today. I know they don't understand. And I forgive them. Amen. Amen. I forgive them. The church used to be a haven and a staple in the community. The church used to be off limits. Now it's fair game. Um, I don't think that the church should have to look like a state prison. We shouldn't have to have a gate with barbed wire all around and pit bulls and rottweilers all running in the, in the parking lot. This is God's house. As a matter of fact, the church is so sacred. We should, not that we can, but we should be able to leave the doors unlocked and nobody touch anything because this is God's place. This was purchased with God's money. You know, as a matter of fact, there's a school right down the street. Uh, the principal called me and talked to me and um, he asked me, he said, if something happens at our school, can we use your church building and, or your parking lot um, as a place for refuge. I said, absolutely you can. Because why? The church is part of the community. Amen. You know, people Amen. should be protecting the church. Amen. I can remember back in the day when people used to drink. Uh, well, some of y'all was drinking MD 2020 back then. Uh, but they used to drink whatever they were drinking. And when they got close to a church, they would put the bottle down. But as soon as they passed the corner of the church, they would turn it back up. But that was their way of showing respect. some type of respect. Amen. Um, I have come here and found beer bottles right there at the door. Empty ones. We had a bus over there in the corner. Um, I got on the bus. Uh, found a pair of gym shoes. I guess somebody ran out their shoes. Found a pair of gym shoes, some tobacco that was on the floor. Now, some of y'all uh, uh, don't know nothing about this, uh, but they take cigars and cut cigars. And those who know, you acting like you don't know. <laughs> they take cigars and they cut cigars and they empty the tobacco out and they put weed in them and they twist it up. And that's what they call a blunt. So they were smoking blunts on the church bus. I found used condoms on the church bus. I came in the parking lot one day, me and brother Marvin, we was riding, on the parking, riding in the parking lot and we saw some kids on the bus and when they saw us, they jumped off the bus and it was doing 180 miles an hour, running away. And I'm looking, and it was about as bright as it is now outside. And I'm thinking, how can you go on church property, get on a church bus, and there was some dudes and some young women. So you, you kind of know what that was. They had turned our church bus into a hotel, a smoking hotel. Our current bus. I started the bus up, was going to go use the bus to go pick up something. Start up. I said, what's happening here? I'm thinking it's about to blow up. I never had heard a machine that big without a catalytic converter. They took our catalytic converter off the bus. I got under the bus and I just saw a gap where it was supposed to be. About six weeks ago, I rode over here, came to pick up something. It was a little windy and the door said, what's the door open for? Door shouldn't be open. I go, jump on the bus, big stones, Somebody had poured oil on the seats. I'm like, what's, what's happening? Listen, I wanted to talk about this because, and I hope this message get out, especially to some of the young ones, because this, this looked like stuff that teenagers do, you know. Um, it, they should come and want to help us. Come and learn about Jesus. And they can come and talk to me. I'm cooler than the other side of the pillow. Yeah. 
I get it. I understand it. But we shouldn't be vandalizing and doing things like that, especially to God's house. I would love to teach younger people what God's house is all about, why we should be respecting the Lord's house. But see, a, a, a lot of times what happened is, you know, we watch these 60 days in and all that kind of stuff. And they got homies that go in and say, man, I was locked up. You know what I'm saying, dog? You know what I'm saying? I got three hots in the car, dog. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, nobody touch me, dog, because you know what I do. You know I'm down for my. And they glamorize the jail life. But there's nothing glamorous about jail. See, today is jumping on the back of a church bus, but tomorrow it'll be robbing a bank. And, and the thing about it is we want to save as many young people from going to the penitentiary as we Amen. can. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. This is what the church is all about. Amen. But they glamorize this kind of stuff. Um, I was over here with my dad some years ago, um, a dude that I've been knowing for a long time. He came and he had like dollar bills on his, on his neck, tattoos on his neck and dice and all that kind of stuff, his name written. I mean, he was like, he was a billboard, you know. He, so he came over and he said, Lavelle, I just had to come see for myself, man. Somebody told me you was here, man. You preaching, huh? This yours, huh? I said, yeah, man, I'm preaching. He said, yeah. I said, where you been, man? I said, I ain't seen you in a minute. He said, man, hey, I've been locked up. I said, you was locked up? Now, this dude was from, uh, he was from the hood for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? I said, you was locked up? He said, yeah. He said, hey, man, I'm just going to keep it straight with you, bro. Man, I cried every night, man. <laughs> I, said, you, I said, you was crying, but what it told me was even the toughest of toughs. They can get broken down when they get to these penitentiaries and they get into these places where, you know, you think you bad around people. And, but when you get around, I mean, I, I, I took the church to, to, to just, uh, 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 what's the, uh, 26 in California? I, I, I took them down there just to see that. And that ain't even no prison, you know, that's just like a holding spot, you know. I went down there and they told us to walk in. And if you're on good conduct, they got guys that they'll let kind of walk the halls a little bit. It was a guy so big. I didn't even want to pass him. I'm just be real with y'all. I, 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 I knew if he hit me, I couldn't take it. He was too big. But I was, you know, and then, and then, and then, when, when we drove up, we heard this. They was banging on the window. Do y'all know what that is? I know y'all gonna act like y'all don't. But that's bang, 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 skeet, skeet, skeet. So what they were doing was trying to let the kids on the church bus know, oh, you come up in here, you could get gat. So I wanted them to see that. It's amazing the shanks that they make. And I'm like, how do you have a knife in jail this long? They take uh, 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 lights and stuff from the ceiling and uh, they can probably take a stick of butter and turn it into a, a, <laughs> some type of knife. But these guys are correct. But my whole point, church, is when things like this happen, the world is wicked. Evil is here. My whole point in saying this is we have to still learn how to forgive. I believe that if people could choose be between Jesus and Lucifer, which one would run the country? The next president would be Beelzebub. This ain't new. Solomon said, you know, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. And we remember that they released a criminal and crucified Jesus. But can I just go back to the church thing just for a minute? When I got over here, all, the eight, all, all of our, 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 our um, alarm panels were ripped off the wall. The siren was ripped off the wall. So we had no protection. And the alarm company told us, we ain't nothing we can do for you right now. So I had a choice. Either fix it or spend the night. Because I was not going to leave my church building naked and open like that. I wasn't going to do it. But I'm saying this for a reason. My sister, I'm going to give you some love today. She loves me. I know she loves me, and if she don't, keep fooling me, because it's working. <laughs> my sister stayed with me till 4.30 in the morning. 4.30 in the morning. I was able to rewire the system. I was able to get it to work so that the alarm could be set. And 
after I rewired the system, we, we went home. Her kids, were, they were at home, so she had to leave her house to come and be with me. Not one time did she say, hey, let's just leave it, let's just, let's just go. And I just want to tell you, I appreciate that because I really do. I really do. I really do. But, but y'all, it's just the love. When you, have, when you have God in your life and when you know how life is and you know how evil is, that's why we ought to be some of the most loving people around because we need one another, y'all. Because if we don't love each other, who's going to love us? Who are we going to run to when we need love? You know, there are people who are waiting for you to run to them so they can take money from you. So they can abuse you. So they can, uh, can just use you or do whatever they want to do. But I want to go back to Luke chapter number 17. I'm going to get out of here. I want to go back to Luke chapter number 17. Uh, Brother Dion, it's the same uh, place that you were at. Luke chapter number 17. And I want you to look at verse number three and four. Brother Dan, could you go back and just read that for me again? The Bible says what? Take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you. If your brother sins against you. Rebuke him. Rebuke him. Let him know about it. Tell him about it. Now, this ain't cool what you just did. Tell him. About it. And you know what? When the Bible says to rebuke, it's talking about out of love. Amen. Amen. You don't just snatch anybody up and cuss them out. Because now we got two people acting up. Mm -hmm. The Bible is talking about when your brother sins against you, rebuke him. Let him know what he did. Keep going, brother. And Dion. if he repents. If he repents. Forgive him. Forgive him. Now, here's the other point I want to show you today. The Bible says if he repents. Repentance is not yours to judge. You, you see why this gets so hard? No, sometimes you, you can just know. You just feel it. That they lie when they say they're sorry. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. But don't judge them, though. But you know what I'm talking about. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, did I hurt you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> but you still have to forgive them. Did, are y'all understand? This is, this is a lesson. We got to understand. You still, whether, they, you, whether you believe them or not, whether they mean it or not, you still have to forgive them. Go, Brother Dan, what does it say? And if he sins against you seven times in a day? If he comes back seven times in a day. Keep going. And seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent. My bad. Oh, did I do that? That's on me. Keep going. You shall forgive him. That's real hard. That's why we're talking about it. But I want you to know that Jesus is not trying to make a fool out of us. He's trying to deliver us, release us. He's like, don't you walk around mad and angry and want to tear up the world. Let me deal with them. You follow me? This is hard. Because some people will step on your foot. And say, put it in your pocket next time. <laughs> or they'll step on your foot and act like they ain't stepped on nothing. And you say, man, you just stepped on my foot. Oh, I did. My bad. <laughs> and you're looking like, who does that? But evil is everywhere. Y'all yeah. understand? Oh, yeah. That's why when we get together, man, we should be praying together, yeah. rejoicing together. This is our haven. This is our refuge. All the crazy stuff that you done been through in the world. You know, think about it. That's why it shouldn't be no crazy stuff going on in church. I mean, how am I going to deal with the evil in the world? Then when I finally make it to church, be able to bump cousin, nephew, and play cousin waiting for me at the door. Can we preach like this, y'all? Yeah. But you got to understand, they got to give account for themselves. Yeah. And you have to give account for yourself. Yeah. So instead of hating them and, 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 and harboring anger and uh, I just don't like this person, come down. Yeah. Give it to the Lord. Yeah. God said, forgive them. Now listen. You may have to get on your knees and ask God, Lord, forgive me for not forgiving them. Lord, clean my heart. Because right now, Lord, I ain't feeling them right now. You may have to say it. Talk to them. 
He know what you're feeling like. But you got to forgive. What does it mean to forgive? We got to talk about this, Jeff. To forgive, it doesn't mean that you have to get put back to where you were. Are you understanding? I can forgive you, but it doesn't mean that you can hold that position in my life like you used to. We can forgive people without welcome them, welcoming them back into our lives. Yes, apology is accepted, but access is denied. That's called consequence. Some folks say, well, you didn't forgive me because you didn't put me back where I was. No, I forgave you. I'm not holding this against you, but I don't trust you. Y'all ain't hearing this, are you? See, forgiveness and trust, they're two different things. I don't have to trust you. As a matter of fact, the Bible teaches me not to trust you anyway. So if you do something to break trust, yes, it may hurt me. I'll forgive you, but I don't have to trust you. Why? Because I put all my trust Y'all ain't hearing this. Listen, the Bible even teaches us not to even trust ourselves. Don't lean upon your own understanding. Doesn't it say that? So people get it all mixed up and messed up. We used to have dinner, but you did something that I didn't like. I forgive you, but you ain't come back over no more though. That's Christian life. And sometimes you have to keep that kind of drama away from you because sometimes people live for the drama. Brother Dan, you got to help me get out of here, man. I got to get out of here. I'm all over the place, Brother Dan. I want you to read verse number five. After Jesus told his apostles that they had to, 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 to forgive, uh, even if a person comes to them uh, seven, seven times in a day, he said you can forgive 70 times seven. You, you remember that? Yeah. When you go to verse, now watch how the apostles, watch how they responded to Jesus. What did they say in verse number five? And the apostles said to the Lord. What they say, D? Increase, your, increase our faith. They said, man, you, you, you got to increase my faith with that one. They were human. Think about it. They're right there with Jesus. And he's saying, this is what I want you to do. Jesus is not physically standing next to us. And he was there with them. And they still say, I need a little bit more, man. I can't do this one. Because it's hard. Because it feels like people are using you. But they're not using you. You're actually using them. Because you can use them on your spiritual resume. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Oh, I remember when Brother Blue Chair kept messing with me. All my ministry, he messed with me. But Lord, I did slap him. Praise God. God wants us to forgive because when we forgive, it helps to grow us. Amen. Amen. It helps to develop us. I want you to know that it takes faith to forgive. That's why the apostle says, increase our faith. We have to believe God and his promises. Amen. Why do Amen. I forgive? Because I believe God. Folk think that you believe them like, ooh. I said that one good. Hey, I, had to, I believe that myself. Hey, Lavelle bought that. No, I didn't buy that. I may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but if you rub my blade, it'll cut you. <laughs> Some things you just know. Game recognize game. So it's not that you believe what everybody tells you. I believe God. And if God tells me this is what I need to do, then guess what? This is what I need to do. So it takes faith. I want you to write down the word faith. Write it down. Write the word faith now. And I want you to circle the F in faith. Just circle it. We're almost out of here. It takes adherence to scripture to forgive. I want you to write the word adherence down. And even if you don't know how to spell it, just write it like it sounds. And circle the A. Brother Dion, real quick. Go over to Ephesians chapter number four. Uh, 
Read verses number 31 and 32 for me, and I believe I called this in the NLT. What does it say, Brother D? Get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of all bitterness. Keep going. Rage. Rage. Anger. Anger. Harsh words. Harsh words. And slander. The Bible says get rid of all that stuff. Keep reading. As well as all types of evil get behavior. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. If you have to get on your knees and beg God every day, do what you got to do. Get rid of it. Because it's not becoming of Christians. And he says what, Brother Dan? Instead, instead, be kind to each other. Be kind to each other. Tenderhearted. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. Just as God through Christ. Just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So if God forgives us, guess what, church? We got to forgive others. It takes love to forgive. Write down love. Circle the L. Dion, I want you to go to Matthew chapter number five. Yeah. Verse number 44. What does it say, Brother Dion? But I say to you. But I say to you. Love your enemies. Ouch. Love who? Love your enemies. Your family. Love your enemies. My enemy? Do, do y'all see this? I think y'all do because that's why you got quiet. Before you was like, praise him. Now you're like, what are you saying? Love your enemies. It's going to take more than I love you to actually love. And sometimes, church, God allows us to go through things so that he can build the love up in us. The Bible says love your enemies. Keep going. Bless those who curse you. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Does this, are y'all reading this? Do good to those who hate you. Keep going. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. It takes love. I got to pray. I got to beg God. I got, but notice how when we read in Ephesians, the Bible told us, get that out of you first. Amen. See, Amen. I can't love right and I'm evil. I got bad behavior. I got evil speaking on my tongue. I can't love you. I can say it, but I'm lying. How can an evil heart love? So the Bible teaches us, you know, we want folk to leave us alone. But what we have to do first is leave evil alone. The Bible says get rid of it. So we have to love. You wrote that down. If you didn't, write it down. Circle the L. It takes light to forgive. Brother Dion, I want you to go to John chapter number 8, verse number 12. I need you to get me out of here. Let's do it. The Bible says what? Jesus spoke to the people once more and said. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, what did he say? I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. If you follow me. If you follow me. You won't have to walk in darkness. You won't have to walk in darkness. Because you will have the light. Because you will have the light. That leads to life. We need Jesus. Amen. Amen. We need the light. We can't love right. We cannot forgive right. Without the light, without Jesus. Now, so write down the word light and circle the L. If we don't have faith, if we don't adhere to the word, if we don't have love, if we don't have the light, look at all the letters that you circle and tell me what's going to happen to you. You're going to what? What is it? You're going to fall. Mm -hmm. You're going to fall. There's no way that you can continue to walk with Jesus and not forgive. Amen. You're going to fall. Amen. I want to say one more thing, and then I'm going to be done. Whether a person is a Christian or a non-believer, or an unbeliever. Even if they don't repent. Because we read where if they repent. And they come back and say uh, I repent. Forgive them. But even if they don't repent. We still have to forgive them. Because God's people don't hold grudges. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand that? 
They don't. We have to forgive. And sometimes the reason why it's hard to forgive is sometimes it's because we have some in us. So again, that's why the writer, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians said, get it out of you first. Get it out of you. I'm going to close. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to do a call to action today. I just want you to share this message with people who are angry, depressed, Amen. going through something, and can't let it go. It's to encourage them. If you know somebody who out there stealing, vandalizing, send it to them. Share it. I'm hoping some good come out of everything that happened bad. I'm hoping that maybe one day some young folk come here and say, I don't want to live like this. Can't God do it? That's what I'm hoping. But I can't show them Jesus being funky. So that's why I got to get it all out of me now. I can't be evil trying to teach them Jesus. I got to let it go. I got to let it go. It's not worth it, church. It's not worth it. We got to let the anger go. And we have to forgive. Amen. We have to forgive. So that's why we're asking the Lord to increase our faith. That's a, that's a, different, that's a different area. That's different from, from asking for a new job. That's uh, different from asking for a car. That's different from saying, Lord, you know, uh, help me pay my mortgage or my rent or whatever. That's a different request. Lord, I, I, I want you to increase my faith so I can forgive. If you have trouble forgiving, let, let me just say this. Don't feel like something is wrong with you. You're human. And those of us who can forgive, we didn't wake up and just say, hey, call me Forgiving Freddy. We didn't do that. Some of us held grudges for years until God woke us up. See, the closer you get to God, the further away from evil you become. Amen. Amen. Right? But if you have trouble forgiving, I just want you to stand where you are. Or if there's somebody that you need to forgive and you haven't forgiven them, just stand up. Don't be embarrassed because think about it. God knows it. All you need to do is just stand up and we're going to pray. It's human. And see, one thing I teach here at Lansing, ain't no point in you looking at nobody, laughing at nobody. This ain't, this, this ain't what this is. This is God's business, man. You know, you know, it's better to stand up now and say, Lord, I need help than to have to stand up on the day of judgment and say, uh, 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 I, didn't, uh, I didn't know you was coming. I was going to forgive him. I swear for God I was going to forgive him. He knows your line. So we might as well do it now. Let's get rid of it. I know it's hard. I'm getting out of here, but y'all just give me like another minute. It's hard, man. When I was on my way to this church, man, I was hurt. I couldn't understand why somebody broke in our beautiful church. This church has been here since 1963. We are a part of the community. We don't mess with anybody. It hurt me. I'm telling you I was hurt. But I had to release it. That's how you do stuff to people. And hurt them more than you thought you would have hurt them. If you get your hands on them. Y'all know what I'm talking about? There's some people serving time right now because they were so angry. And when they finally got a chance to grab that person, they killed them. They didn't intend to kill them, but their anger came out. God don't want us to be like that. He don't want us to be like that. I know somebody right now, you wrestling. It feels like Satan is holding your jacket. You want to stand up, but you're afraid to stand up. But you're not afraid to walk around with his seed in you. You got to say, I'm tired of this. That's 
that's a part of living in sin. We talked about that. I'm tired of living in sin. How can I give God all of me and I got Satan owning some of me? I got to forgive. And I'm going to tell you something. When you can forgive, you can also ask for forgiveness. I don't have a problem asking people to forgive me. I'm sorry. If I offended you, I'm sorry. See what he's saying? He must be admitting the truth. No, I'm admitting I'm sorry. I don't have to explain nothing to nobody. I read somewhere there's only one judge. I read somewhere there's only one father. I got to give account to God. I don't owe nobody else any explanation. And if people don't forgive you, hey, that's on them. You are clean. You are clear. See, it ain't like being in school. You know, in school, I, I don't like her. And I don't want you to like her. And I don't like her or her, so y'all can't talk to them. It ain't like that. God ain't like that. When you have repented and asked for forgiveness from your heart, even if it hurts, God forgives us. We serve a good God, y'all. So if God forgives us for all the things that we've done, we ain't always been clean. We've done some dirt. I've done some dirt. We all have done some dirt. And if you don't think you did any dirt, it's because you thought your dirt wasn't dirt. But dirt is dirt. We all have done it. All of us have done it. All of us have done it. But if God can forgive that, why can't you forgive me? You know, the Bible teaches, and I'm going to get out of here, y'all. I apologize. Kind of. Okay, I'm lying. I don't apologize. I take that back. I take that back. Now, let me get this out. Let me get this out. I ain't lying. I ain't going to lie no more. Let me get this out. If we don't forgive others, all that crazy stuff we did, that stupid stuff we did, the stuff we did, and we look and say, I hope I don't see nobody I know. God said, I ain't going to forgive you. So now, now, I want you to think about this. Who do you hate enough to go to hell for? You must love them. I mean, if you really to go, if you are willing to go to hell for somebody, how you hating them? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Let's break these chains. Let's break these walls down. I don't care who it is. It could be your baby mama, your, 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 your baby daddy. It doesn't matter. I know how relationships go. Man, God is taking care of your baby. Even if that scoundrel don't want to give you no money, even if the woman run out on you, God is going to take care of you. You don't have to take your frustration out on oh, people. Take it to God. Take it to God. Take it to God. God will forgive you. God will forgive you. Somebody else needs to stand up. I know you're there. Get up. Get up. It's time somebody called you out. Get up. You know you ain't right. You know when you don't do right. Y'all look, even little kids know when they ain't right. What you been doing? Now, we grown folk. It's amazing how we don't want to stand up, how we don't want to repent to God, how we don't want to give it all to God. But some of us would do the fool in front of everybody. This ain't doing the fool. This saying I'm tired of doing the fool. And now I want to do Jesus. Somebody else needs to stand up today. Take that glue off your skirt, off your suit jacket, and stand up and let's pray together. Oh, I know it's uncomfortable. It's real uncomfortable. The devil gets us like, is he talking about us? You know what? I told you don't go to church today, didn't I? He talking about us. Yes, because I want us to be saved. There was a time I couldn't release it, y'all. There was a time I couldn't release it. I realized I was damaging myself. You know, when you go to the doctor and they tell you that your blood pressure is 120 over 80 and you good, and then all of a sudden you keep going and then it went up to 160, What's happening? They, they, you know, the first thing they want, they ask you, 
Is anything going on in your life? Stress. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know what you're saying right now. Please shut up. No, I ain't going to shut up. I ain't going to shut up. Because the devil don't stop messing with me. So I'm pushing him today. I'm pushing him today. He don't care. And he done got somebody in my church. We need to stand up and tell the truth. If you can't forgive, be real with it. I can't forgive. I need help. Listen, what's wrong with asking God for help? What's wrong with it, brother? You, you know anything wrong with asking God for help? We're his children. I love my son. Whatever my son needs when he come to me, I'm there. Because that's my child. We are children of God, y'all. And if we need help to forgive, you say, Lord, I need your help. Come on down here, Jeff. Come on down here. Come on down. Come on. But, but I don't know what you're going to sing, Jeff. But it's got to be something. We just, I want to sing something like a, a, let's sing Trouble in Our Way, something like that. Let's sing Trouble in Our Way. And uh, I, want, I, want, I want somebody else to be real today. See, this is not for the show. This is for one of those to go. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So I told you, evil and peace can't exist together. We're making a decision today. We're making a decision today. It got to go. It's holding me down. It's not doing nothing for me. Hey, it's not doing anything to grow us. So we need to let it go. If you're angry right now and don't know how to channel your anger, stand up. Sometimes you'll cuss your own mama or daddy out. Folk tell me I ain't spoke to my mama in 20 years. Huh? And you're bragging about it? I ain't spoke to my daddy in 30 years. I can't stand him. Hey, I know parents be off the chain just like everybody else. But you know what? They're people. Ain't right. that they're right, D? Amen. They're people, and they need to be forgiven. Amen. Who's to say you can't help someone else turn their life around by showing them the love and forgiveness that you have in you? <laughs> Y'all, I, I wanna, I'm going to go ahead and sing, but this, this, this is good, Joe. Because you know what? The devil don't like us to preach like this. He wants us to come to church, sing a couple of songs. Then after we get to singing, we say amen to the message. Then we speak to everybody. Then we leave. No, man. That ain't real. That ain't life. I need a change. I ain't underdog, so I don't have to go in a phone booth to change. All I need to do is go and pray to Jesus to change. I'm telling you, we need to change. We need to change. There are husbands and wives. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to shut up. But let me talk. There are husbands and wives who sleep in the same bed who don't even. Can't stand each other. The middle of the bed is cold like ice. When you first got together, you didn't want a king size bed. You wanted a twin size bed. So you can be close to one another. <laughs> I'm bringing love to the home today. Brothers and sisters ain't talking to each other. Let that mess go. Forgive. Look how good God is to you. Ain't he good? Ain't he good? He's good, y'all. That's why we're forgiven. You are not weak for forgiving. You are not weak. You are strong. You are God's people. You're doing what God says to do. By you saying that I'm going to take control over what God gives me control over, that means that you are saying, Lord, lead me down the path I need to go down. I'm going to tell you something. Listen, listen, listen. When you leave here, Satan going to grab you. Amen. Come here. You know why? <laughs> he got scared. You know why? <laughs> Satan going to grab you. Because now he knows God got you. Y'all ain't hear me. Can I say it again? Yeah. Satan's going to grab you because he knows that God got you. But when Satan grabs you, snatch yourself away and you keep walking. Don't let that anger, that stuff that folk did to you, don't let it take over you. Listen, church, and I promise you I'm leaving. When you let that anger just linger, they win. They win. They give you hell here and going to cause you to go there. 
they win it all. They run a Boston. Y'all understand that? Get up. Make up in your mind today that you ain't going to let, you ain't going to walk out of here the same way you came in. I know you didn't come here to hear this, but this is what God's cook had for you. And guess what? It's mm, mm, good. You need it. I need it. Go ahead, Jeff. Give me something. Well, trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. Oh, trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. Oh, I lay awake at night. Oh, Tossing and turning all night, pacing the floor all night. But that's alright, Lord, because I know that my Jesus, I know my Jesus, my, 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 my Jesus, He fixed it after a while, Lord. Oh, oh, trouble God. in my home, Lord. We need to have more love. Oh, there's so much trouble, Lord. We need to have more love. I lay awake at night, Lord. Oh, I lay awake at night, Lord. Tossing and turning all night, Lord. Pacing the floor all night, Lord. But that's alright, Lord. Because I know that my Jesus, I know my Jesus, my, 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 my Jesus. He fixed it up the while, Lord. With a trouble in my way, Lord. I got to cry sometimes. Lord, there's so much trouble. Lord, I got to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night, Lord. Oh, I lay awake at night, Lord. I'm tossing and turning all night, Lord. But that's alright, Lord, cause I know that my Jesus, I know my Jesus, my, 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 my Jesus, I know my Jesus, my, 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 my Jesus, he fixed it at the wild So I want to thank Brother Lavelle for that fantastic message. And that may be one of the hardest